viewers, thanks for tuning in to this conversation with the management of NIT Technologies. And um, Sudhir Singh joins in, uh, uh, arguably, at a, at a, at a, maybe at an early hour, all the way from New Jersey today. Sudhir, good having you. Thanks much for joining in. Hope all is safe. Everything's absolutely super at this point in time, Neeraj, and it's not too early in the morning as well. 7.30 out here in New Jersey. Okay, well, that's that's typically a journalist hour when the equity markets are starting. So interesting to see uh -huh. that a lot of other people are doing this. But anyway, Sudhir, so uh, let, let's talk about uh, uh, CoForge, if I can call it that, right? Because that's what the new, um, how, how it's not, it's not new technically because we've been now using that for a while on air too. Um, tell us a bit about... Uh, how do you anticipate the near and the medium term to be like? Because, um, well, I wrote a piece on it about a month back about what could happen to IT over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. But I get divided opinion from people who watch the sector, some very optimistic and some not so. So can you tell us a bit about how the industry is shaping up and then maybe a bit about what CoForge could do? Absolutely. I think we were... Uh, uh, if I look at uh, the last two quarters, in the last two quarters are the ones that have been very significantly affected, the last one particularly so. In our case, uh, we've been able to, outside the travel portfolio, grow across both the quarters. Needed. So the first quarter, which in our case was the affected quarter, was quarter four of the last fiscal year, where the firm grew 3% despite the pandemic headwinds. Even last quarter, Outside of travel, the other six businesses on a consolidated basis grew 3.2% sequentially. When we, when we finished our investor briefing after our last quarterly call, we talked about the fact that in the current quarter, which is quarter two of the fiscal year for us, we expect to grow at least 7%. So yes. uh, from our point of view, uh, the interesting and uh, uh, more than interesting, I think the somewhat... Uh, the, very reassuring uh, change that we've seen is the fact that the impact on the growth momentum that the firm had built has not been uh, very extended, given where we are, given the current vantage that we have, and given the outlook that we had shared around at least a seven percent growth. So that's that's how we see uh, that's how we see the headwinds around the pandemic working out when it comes to the revenue growth of the firm. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, while, while the start was arguably very weak for you, your your guidance for not just the current quarter that we are in, but for the year is arguably the strongest amongst the peer set. So what gives you that confidence? Is it, is it I mean, is it company specific or do you believe that the uh, while the adoption of technology is moving well, Indian IT service providers or IT service providers in general would be able to match that growth? How, how is it shaping up? So I won't, I won't, uh, I won't venture out to talk about how all the IT service uh, services providers would do, Neeraj. But uh, as you rightly said, we've said that for the year, despite the pandemic and despite, in our case, us being in the crosshairs of the significant impact on the travel industry because of the pandemic, we will grow at least seven percent in the current quarter and mid single digit growths for the year. And what gives us the confidence, what gives me the confidence to make that assertion and to have made that assertion is the fact that uh, in the last quarter, despite the headwinds, our order intake went up to $186 million. Last quarter, despite the headwinds, we added 11 new clients. Last quarter, despite the headwinds, we ended up at a very, very strong order executable book status for the firm. And despite the pandemic headwinds, at least the way we've seen the situation evolve on the ground in the trenches is that we've been able to increase the R wallet share across the key clients that we operate in. Hence, uh, hence the confidence, hence the assertion, and hence the outlook that we've shared around this quarter numbers and also for the full year numbers being at mid single digit. Interesting. So is, uh, are you saying that you, and I, I heard you say that you don't want to speak for the industry, so I'll, I'll kind of first talk about NIT to go for it. Sorry, excuse me for using those terms intermittently, just that all our years we've been used to calling it NIT tech. But yeah, uh, is the strategy to try and mine more out of the large existing clients or or that is, I mean, that would obviously be one. It would not be the only strategy. But is that going to pay rich dividends? Or would this be acquisition-led as well? Because incessant, I presume, in some way give, has given you some legs of growth too. So do you reckon that this growth will come uh, organically? 
or would it be a combination of organic come inorganic and inorganic would it be getting a foot in the door and mining more or would it be something else so uh, our view neeraj uh, is that co forge in the years to come for the last 3 years we very consciously stayed away from talking about becoming a billion dollar organization because it doesn't make sense when you're a 400 million dollar organization which is what we were 3 years back to start talking about a billion dollars over the last 3 years we've taken the firm as a group as a collective of 11000 employees and we've moved from being a 400 million dollar firm to roughly about a 600 million dollar firm despite all that's happened around us including the pandemic right at this point in time the view that we have is that we as a firm have to create a path to a billion dollars on a go forward basis we haven't established a very hard timeline around it which i suspect might be your next question but but the intent of the firm is very clear co forge on a go forward basis from where it stands right now has to chart out a very clear plan to a billion dollars the growth is going to come from a clutch of factors you're absolutely right mining has to be one of them we plan very consciously to go with a diamond internally we call it a diamond and a key account strategy and to mine more and to increase our wallet shares and that's worked very well for us despite travel having gone down you will see the firm still continues to grow because we continue to increase our wallet share across all industries including travel with the reduced spend we will also focus on the new client acquisition in uh, engine the path that we've created at this point in time will i'm sure have some acquisitions coming in but this path has not been created predicated on inorganic growth the intent is the 600 to a billion dollar journey should be an organic growth led journey it should ride on the two legs of mining farming increasing wallet share and also making sure that we continue to win large deals at large deals as we have over the last 12 odd quarters it's going to be a mix of both it will also it will also have another interesting component to it so 3 years back as a firm we said we will focus on only three industries we will focus only on insurance we will focus only on bfs and even within bfs on capital markets and we will focus only on travel going forward as we chart out this path we will also include healthcare we already included healthcare as the fourth industry that we are focused on so that's going to be another leg uh, needed to how we see the path evolving in the years to come okay interesting and well logical probably to have healthcare in in the scheme of things but just one quick follow up and i know you won't be able to speak about anything which is beyond what you any anyway speak in an investor call but but as, as you preempted my question and as as routine as it would sound but growth rates look fantastic if the time period is compressed and they look pretty pedestrian if the time period is very extended uh, i mean the target is good is the uh, is 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 it going to be galloping towards a billion dollars or is it going to be a slow steady move if you can give that brief so uh while i can't while while i can't offer ironclad assurances all i can offer is the track record of the team that's come together over the last 3 years and if you look at the last 3 years uh and if i just take out the last couple of quarters mm. we, we we've been clocking and you will see this possibly one of the highest growth rates in the it industry the intent is to get as soon as as fast as we can to the billion dollar mark we also always been conservative around sharing plans which is why for the last 3 years every time this question came up around are you going to be the next billion dollar company the answer used to be very clear it used to be let's become half a billion let's make sure we've got the leadership in place the smes in place the capabilities in place and now that we've got all three in place and most importantly a culture in place which is which can absorb change which can direct growth uh, we think we'll get to that hopefully hopefully galloping to it as you said but uh, at least at a minimum uh, in line with the performance over the last 3 years okay um uh, one more one more question i mean and again just wanting your perspective here uh, typically mm-hmm. companies which have uh, you know tried to get this i mean for the last whatever 10 12 15 years when some of your larger peers were not so large Uh, as they are currently and they use this get the foot in the door and then mine your way through and get more wallet share it was a very margin accretive strategy for them and now your your guidance about 17 half 18 odd percent is fine i'm just thinking that 3 years out do you reckon that ebit margin trajectory is higher 
or would you believe that since growth the impulse would be on growth your focus will not necessarily be on margin it could come out as a by product but it not be the main focus how are you charting this uh, over the last few years neeraj the growth has been both on revenue growth and margins which okay. is why you've seen both of them go up on a go forward basis uh, what we pointed out and we, what we pointed out in our investor calls in the past is that we would like to keep margins at a minimum to 18% that rough 18% threshold that we already achieved for the firm hmm. uh, uh, with with growth one always gets operating leverage in the initial part of our journey our belief is we might want to invest to keep that growth momentum going at some stage uh, this is a call that the board and the management will take together over time whether we start deflecting more uh, of that operating leverage towards margin increment is something that we will talk about but at this point in time we stay by what we have indicated in the past 18% is a very good threshold that a firm of our size has established we would like to continue to be there while continuing to drive the same kind of growth trajectory that we have in the past okay very good uh, at the end of the month of july uh, it was evident from your commentary that the deal pipeline was looking strong and uh, there won't be unless i'm very wrong please correct me if i'm wrong there won't be further erosion in the airline services business for you uh, have either of those things in a matter of 20 days it's too soon but i'm still asking in a matter of 20 days have either of those things shown any signs of a change for the better or for the worse conversations or deal closures whatever neeraj at this point in time uh, uh, our outlook remains consistent with what we discussed in the investor call that you talked about after our first quarter results so you are absolutely right on the airlines front airlines has already compressed over the last two quarters very significantly for us so that revenue stream is now only 5.5% we see no probability of that declining and we do see that over time whenever the pandemic gets over we aren't baking it into our projections going up but it's not going to go down uh and the outlook in general that we share uh, around quarter 2 and for the year we stay by by the, by those comments and by that comment okay um just last one question on coforge before we move on to just a couple of questions that i would have for the space at large which is it services even though you said that you won't want to talk too much about it but i'll still uh, try and ask mm-hmm. you a couple of things uh this whole uh for lack of a better word rebranding exercise uh, that you you entered into i'm sure all of that has some purpose behind how you want to move ahead compared to what you have done now i i heard you mention twice in this call that in the last 3 years the team that you built the fact that it is open to accepting change so on so forth but is there in the new identity or the new avatar an attempt to make the next 3 years materially different from the past three so neeraj uh, uh, for us the uh, the the name change exercise in some ways also signifies and stands for the change that's all already been driven in the growth trajectory and the uh, okay. and the change that's been driven within the firm so after three years it made intuitive sense to call that out to very explicitly call it out with a new name coforge that both of us are discussing as we go ahead there are elements of what has worked for us over the last 40 years and then in the more immediate past over the last 3 years that we definitely want to retain and build upon and there are other things that we would like to to start in terms of what we want to build upon things that we really put together over the last 3 years there are three things that uh, that we as a group as a as a as a as an organization are very clear that we want to retain the the first thing that we very clearly want to retain is this focus that we all always had on understanding the industry process also and not just being a technology player as i reflect on what that means in real terms for us is a real proof of that is a firm our size 600 million dollars has a 40 million dollar proprietary insurance platform business right now which is growing is highly differentiated and makes a lot of impact with a, a boat load of the volumes of the lloyds insurance market actually getting riding on that platform so i think that's one thing focus on domain understanding domain and not just coming in with a tech view we will retain the second thing that we will retain here is 
is a focus, and this isn't talk. This isn't talking about emerging and digital technologies. We always had a very very strong filter when it comes to classifying an engagement as a digital engagement or a revenue stream as a digital revenue stream. We call something digital not because the technology gets ticked. We call something and we classify something as digital only if it can drive real transformation and makes a true impact on the client's business, not just in our heads. So when we look at our firm's revenue, we've already moved that number to 40% between the IP and digital revenues. Our intent in the short term, not long term, is to get it to 45 roughly as soon as we can. That is the second thing we'll focus on and retain. The third thing that we, we, I, all of us are very passionate about retaining is the culture that we've created. It's a culture based on respect and trust, shown of all the platitudes, right? Uh, a real translation, uh, a real indication of what that means is if you look at us as an organization, last four or five years, all the four acquisitions that were done, small acquisitions, all of them have been extremely successful because there's been a two-way street around trust and respect with the organizations that were brought into the fold. If you look at respect and trust, that translates into the fact that we don't work with 100 partners across the technology ecosystem. We work with a few. But the ones that we work with, we create relationships that are really deep and meaningful with PEGA, and we're very proud to be their platinum partners. We work with them and we have the world's largest number of certified systems architects in PEGA certified by PEGA. That's an illustration. With Duck Creek, and you know Duck Creek and their IP on Monday, we have a very close relationship based on trust, based on respect, and we are, we believe, one of the strongest and the fastest growing partners with them in their ecosystem. With MuleSoft, a former size is one of the three preferred strategic partners globally. So those three things we'll retain. What we will add will be things like a new focus on healthcare that I talked with you about. What we will add will be an acceleration around our AI capabilities and our cloud capabilities, which are also building. Okay. Uh, one final question, Sudhir. And, and uh, this is one for which I, well, I, I was myself thinking about how would IT services as a business do this, right? Um, uh, I was looking at the last 10, 12 years and for the larger and the mid-sized companies, uh, the profile of the operational metrics have largely remained the same. If anything, they have consolidated. Or for companies which were at the lower bracket or on the operational metrics, have inched up higher. The revenue growth may have varied. Now, I hear a lot of arguments from bulls in the IT space. Excuse me for the long question, but just humor me. I hear a lot of arguments from people in the who are bullish on the IT space about how they believe that post-COVID, with technology becoming such a dominant theme in all of our lives, uh, the value, the the business mix would change. The value that Indian IT services or IT services as a business in general is providing will change, and therefore operational metrics would improve significantly over a five-year, ten-year period, and thereby valuation multiples too. Now I understand you can't comment on valuation multiples, but I'm wondering, ten years out, do you reckon? Do you really believe that IT services as a business can scale up from where it is on the operational side currently to multiple notches higher, and how and why. So that scale up Neeraj in some ways has already been happening, right? Uh, I obviously don't know, I profess to know next to nothing about the stock market and valuations and the bull runs, but let me give you my more of a more of a practitioner view to how I see the space evolving. Uh, 20 years back, when uh, I used to be a sales manager in an IT services firm, when we sat down and we started doing our budgeting processes, we used to worry about what portion of the industry ecosystem has discretionary revenues and what portion of the technology revenue is non-discretionary. And the aim was always to go after the non-discretionary revenue because that was quote unquote the sticky revenue that an IT services provider wants. The big change that I've seen over the last two decades, and this isn't just COVID related, it's been happening for a while, but I think it's got more pronounced over the last three to five years, is that technology spend is no longer seen as discretionary or non-discretionary, right? That angst that used to exist around the beginning of the calendar year in everyone's mind about what will happen to the budget seems to have gone away. It's been a, it's been a progressive secular trend over the years, but uh, that ties into the question that you asked me. 
technology has got very strongly infused with uh, with just how you run a business so all the fancy stuff around technology first digital first is now getting lived within the organizations that we see around us that's one the other trend again uh, that that we see is over the past few years particularly over the last one decade that difference between business operations technology operations has really gone away you look at the profiles of cios today and coos today and ceos today you find them just moving across the ecosystem almost every day if you speak to the chief operating officer of any large financial services or insurance firm today i find them as knowledgeable about technology services particularly the application of technology services as just about anyone in the technology organization of that particular firm so those are two trends that give me comfort that give me a sense that uh, long term medium term irrespective of what's happening behind uh, around us at this point in time technology as a lever for driving actual real world impact instead of just talking about impact on powerpoints is already in play it uh, it gives me comfort that service providers who come in with a mindset of actually adding value will end up playing at a level that is many notches higher than where they might be bracketed at this point in time so i'll i'll answer it in that way uh, that those are the two things that i see at this point no oh, lovely i'm good to have that last connection and let's see if uh, your company as well as some other indian id service vendors uh, can do well because that will work well for the investors too but it was lovely talking to you and since you're going to office regularly i wish you stay safe uh, and um, have have a great uh, quarter we'll of course look to speak to you at the end of the next quarter as well Very good speaking to you, Neeraj. Thanks so much for your time and your interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zeev.